Greetings, mighty companions, and welcome back to Transforming Relationships Through A Course of Miracles with the Cleanse. And... Oh, Holy Spirit. You never leave home without it. So welcome back to part two of Entering the Art. And so glad to say I'm both the blue book and the purple annotated. Mm -hmm. It's chapter 20, section four, Entering the Art. Entering the ark. And I believe, baby, you're saying you're just gonna read the last part of uh, where we left off. Yeah, and if I was. If you need to catch up, you can always go back. To exactly. Sunday so what I wanted to this is entering the ark part two, and um, so if you would like to see the whole thing, then go to last Sunday, which would be entering the ark part one, and you know we do one paragraph one through four, and it's. Juicy, there's tons to it. So I'm just going to read the last few sentences of paragraph four, and then we're just going to move right on to paragraph five, which is where we left off last week. Right. All right. But the basic gist, the basic gist, the basic gist uh, is is that there is an arc of peace, and the uh, the arc of peace is the vehicle that takes you to. It's a portal to another world. So the arc of peace is entered two by two. But with those two goes another world, a different mm -hmm. world. And, um, and so, so the Ark of Peace is something that you cannot enter alone. You have to take your brother's hand, which is just a metaphor for seeing one other person's innocence. You, so you can't enter heaven, you can't enter the real world, you can't enter reality by yourself, which means holding a grievance instead of another person's hands. So it's basically that concept that you don't get into heaven or to the real world by yourself. You gotta take somebody with them by taking their hand and not letting them feel guilty and entering that ark of peace with you. And basically that's what our relationships are supposed to be, an ark of peace. Mm -hmm. An ark of peace that keeps us safe as we, as as we ride upon the the waves of the world basically all right so hi Bridget lovely to see you so that's the basic gist of part one hi, but uh, not definitely not as good as part one itself and so the last four sentences of paragraph four in the original in the original dictation says those who choose freedom will experience only freedom's results that makes sense okay those who those who choose freedom their power is of god and those who choose freedom will give freedom to only what god has given to share freedom with them mm -hmm. now um there, there was a great line in there i want to see if i can um oh such a great line uh, your insane laws were made to guarantee that you would make mistakes and then give those mistakes power over you by accepting their results as you're just due. Well, what could that be but insanity? Right. Our insane laws are that we can judge the innocent, those made in creator's likeness, to be bad, mm -hmm. to be not innocent. And so then we get uh, the results of those kind of laws and I like what you just read that <clears throat> uh, their their power is of God and they will give it only to what God has given mm -hmm. in other words we're not giving what as we choose to give as we choose to see fit because we're gonna miss the mark mm -hmm. we need to give as God has given Yes. And that's why we're always called on to be patient, mm -hmm. to wait on the voice of truth. Because if we don't, we're going to act on what we give, not mm -hmm. what God has given, but what we have given. And there's a big difference to share with others, yes. our brothers and sisters. Exactly. So, um, so you can't enter the ark without giving freedom to another. It doesn't matter who, <laughs> it doesn't matter who, but you can't get on the ark of peace. You can't get to the real world or get to heaven 
without offering freedom to another, which is the same as saying offering them guiltlessness, releasing them from guilt. And we can't get on the ark with another, like, you know, Mama Camel and then Papa Camel. And then Papa Camel looks over at Papa Donkey and kicks Papa Donkey off the boat. Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to, as we were talking the other day, you're going to go over the side with your own judgment. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> you're likely to take the other person with you because your judgment of attack is going to make their response want to attack back. It's not going to be helpful. Mm -hmm. It's not going to make them not want to attack. It's going to encourage them to attack. So they very well might go overboard with you. Mm -hmm. And that's what we keep doing is we, we get on, we finally get on board and then we condemn somebody. And then we get kicked, kicked out. Get kicked right back out. Mm -hmm. And then we have to try to get back on the ark again, which means we have to find somebody again. Mm -hmm. To see as innocent which, and to which, offer freedom which, from uh, guilt to. Which heaven is offering us the first person we come across. Absolutely. Absolutely. We see them as an innocent child of God, harmless. Uh, guiltless, guiltless, abundant, powerful, free, free, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and all of those things that we give unto them, we give unto ourselves. Mm -hmm. And not only do they walk on the boat of safety with us, we walk on the same boat mm -hmm. with them. It's such a wonderful plan mm -hmm. it, because that's how masterful God is. God's, God's like, plan. I'm not going to make it that people just dwindle in slowly, one by one, drippling in. I'm going to come up with a plan that, you know, that multiplies it twice as fast. you got to come in with somebody else. Mm -hmm. But boy, yeah. they sure well, are taking their time. It's, a, it's an arc of peace. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, there is no peace by yourself. There's no peace leaving your brothers and sisters out. No. You know, outside the, the ring of innocence. And so you can't get on the arc of peace by yourself. You know, so forget about, you know, trying to crash it into the front of the line <laughs> you know by yourself exactly out of my way out of my don't you know, you who, know I, who I don't am? you know who I am I don't, I don't need a partner I don't care if everybody here is assigned a, a partner mm -hmm. and you notice that's the pattern but I'm different mm -hmm. I'm coming into I'm heaven special. by myself mm -hmm. I couldn't find anybody innocent. <laughs> I couldn't find anybody. Yeah, that's because nobody innocent will be with you. I couldn't find anybody <laughs> equally good as me uh -huh. to be worthy to I come into you, heaven. I felt me, God, but she's, <laughs> boy, you made it hard. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we said. Yeah, you about. really made some doozies, God. You know, I guess you were having a bad day when you made yeah, that person. When all those people. When you made Joe down down the street, woo, yeah. I guess you were having a bad day, God. Maybe you were having some gas. Yeah, I can see why you say many won't make it. <laughs> I see what you say. <laughs> no, luckily, God didn't say that. At least not in the course. <laughs> okay, so it said the line is: those who choose freedom will experience only freedom's results. Those who choose freedom, their power is of God, and they will give power only to what God has given to share power with them. Now, nothing but power can only, uh, nothing but what God has given can touch those who choose freedom. For those who choose freedom, they see only what God has given. And these folks who choose freedom, they share their power according to the will of God. So however God shares power, that's how we share power. Those who choose freedom, they share power the way God shares power, meaning sharing, right. <laughs> sharing <laughs> power. You know, what we what we heard about God is that God hoards power. Yeah, God's and, a hoarder. And then, and then what we've learned to become because of that programming is power hoarders. And our relationships become a power struggle because we're hoarding power thinking that we can have power by ourselves. But this is saying that you can't have power by yourself. Power is shared. Power that's of God is power that's shared. Where we share our power instead of we try to take our power from each other. 
Sharing is the key word. Yeah, sharing is the key word. They, you, you don't get to have power. You don't. You can't have power by yourself. You can't. In other words, I can't. You can't keep power for yourself. That's why competition is so silly, and it doesn't mean mean anything. It doesn't do anything because it says power is only as God uh, shares power and God shares power. All of creation, if we just keep remembering was made so that God could share. Yeah, that's it. That's all God does. God doesn't keep anything for God, God's self. The only thing that's different about God and us, of course, the miracle says, is that God created us and we didn't create God. But all that God is and all that God has and all that God does, God shares with us according to A Course of Miracles. So there's nothing that God is, has, or does that we don't have or are or do. God, why? Because God shares. That's all God does. That's all God does is give. Is God share. God doesn't, you know, give and then take back or hold back some for for God Himself. And you know, that's not how God is. The God according to the course. God, the God of the course and miracles. A normal house. Could you imagine? <clears throat> you're walking mm -hmm. through the house and you go to open up a door and you're going, "What's wrong with this door?" Hey, Dad. <laughs> Mom, this door's locked. <laughs> yeah, that's because that's our room, buddy. <laughs> yeah, you don't go in there. Oh, well, 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 why? What's in there? You don't need to know. All right. You don't even need it, to know. <laughs> it's for us. Yeah, that's above your pay grade, son. <laughs> no, yeah. that would be a, a an abusive situation. That's right. That's an earthly father. That's an earthly father at at worst at its worst because even an earthly father wouldn't imagine doing that an no. earthly father wants to share is wrong a, really a, a healthy wise father all that live within that house a, a healthy wise father yeah. wants only to share and give to it, their offspring right but yeah. an unhealthy unwise father is going to be abuse like you said abusive like this is for me i don't care if you're my child yeah. So, um, so those who give freedom, those who share freedom like God does, instead of trying to keep, instead of trying to keep freedom, I'll say that again. Uh, anyone who shares power instead of tries to keep power for themselves, nothing but freedom can touch these folks. Hmm. If I choose, if I choose only to share power, like my Creator shares power with me, instead of trying to take it or compete for it or do the power struggle, then nothing but freedom can touch me. So if I don't try to take power or take control, I I experience freedom. Mm -hmm. Nothing can touch me but freedom. Isn't that nice? So what makes me not free is I'm not sharing power. I'm not sharing freedom. Uh, I'm not sharing freedom. I'm taking it or I'm trying to take or control, take the power for myself from somebody else, not sharing it. So just so it sinks in different, how do we do that in our relationship? Well, any, any conflict that we have is us trying to take power instead of sharing power mm -hmm. you know all of our conflict and our competition is you know i want to be the one who decides i want to be the one who's right i want to be the one who knows what's going on it, every conflict is coming because i want i'm not sharing power mm -hmm. you know i'm not offering freedom every conflict is i'm not offering freedom i'm offering guilt and for a lot of us, whether we want to admit it or not, you know, Anna and I talk a lot about the conditioning, our conditioning that we've had since our child our, our rearing days. Brainwash programming. Yeah, programming, our conditioning, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. But our culture, some more deeply than others, uh, do not teach a, a program or a curriculum of equality mm -hmm. it teaches mm -hmm. you know in a lot of cultures that men are elevated up and women are down here and if the man says so mm -hmm. then say so 
you know, it, it's going to go that way. <clears throat> and even here in our land of America, where we're broadcasting from, you know, up until recently, it wasn't that way. You know, up until recently, let's not forget that women didn't even have the right to vote. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. I mean, for real, that wasn't that long ago. Let's nope. call it a generation. Mm -hmm. And and we've been so we've been conditioned. And I say these things because it's not our fault. Mm -hmm. That's what Spirit has been lovingly showing me so graciously lately. Is it's not our fault. You can't condemn the conditioned. Those that have been brainwashed, as Anna said, can't condemn them. You can only have compassion on them. And we've been conditioned that our relationships are not equal. There's the boss and there's the employee. There's the master, there's the servant. There's the husband, there's the wife. There's blah, 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 all the way down. Uh, as you were saying, competition. Mm, competition. Competition. Pa power struggle. Power struggle. In our, you were asking what's, a, what's, in a, uh, what's a practical application. Well, we everybody can relate to power struggles in your relationship. You know, who's going to decide what we do? Who Who is the one who's right? Who's the one who knows That's more? All the who's the one going to decide what it means? Who's the one decide what we're going to do? You know? And, um, and, you know, those are instances where we're not sharing power and we're not giving freedom. We're not giving freedom to another. We're saying, unless you do it like this, you're wrong. Unless you see it like this, you're wrong. Unless you, you know, um, and, and so, but when you share, when you give only what God has given power and share it with others, then nothing but freedom can touch you because you see only freedom because you share your power according to the will of God. And by sharing your power with, with others instead of trying to take it and compete for it, thus your freedom is established and maintained. Okay, When you only share power like God does, uh, your freedom is established and your freedom is maintained and your freedom is upheld through all temptations to imprison and to be in prison. When all you're giving is freedom, then your freedom is established and maintained. And when all you're giving is freedom, then your freedom is upheld through all temptations to imprison and to be imprisoned. You know, we, what's our temptation? I, I am tempted sometimes to imprison people with guilt, with my scripts. And sometimes I'm tempted to let other people do that to me, to imprison me with guilt to their scripts. But if I'm only giving freedom and sharing freedom like God did with all of creation, then even though I'm tempted to imprison uh, others and even though I'm tempted to let myself be imprisoned my freedom from imprisonment will be up, upheld through all that temptation so that's the thing you know we always have to be asking ourselves when we're in conflict with another what is it that I want what is it I want do I want to be right or do I want to be free what do I want <laughs> You know, remember that before you respond. You know, to me, that's enlightenment, where you ask yourself that question, what do I want before you respond to another? <laughs> and see, we, we've uh, conditioned ourselves to be the decision maker of everything. In other words, like something happens, and then we want to be the decider of the meaning for whatever happened. We want to give it, we want to give it the meaning. Mm -hmm. We are a bunch of decision-making freaks. Fools. Fools. And God is the decision-maker. God is the one that mm -hmm. says, this is what everything means. This is what this means. This is what mm -hmm. that means. This is mm -hmm. what that means. And if you just come to me, 
then I'll share these meanings with you. Mm -hmm. And we said, no, you know, I kind of like that, that role that you have. I think I would like to be the decision maker. Mm -hmm. I would like to give the meaning to everything. Mm -hmm. And now we find ourselves in a world where everybody's like us. Mm -hmm. We all want to be the one making the decision. We, we want the power. We all want the power so, that yeah. we think God has. We want the power. And we don't recognize God sharing it with us. Right. We see God as God's hoarding it. Mm -hmm. And so we want it and we want to hoard it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And But we forget our neighbors here on planet hell, earth that we made with us, mm -hmm. which is the place where everybody tries to keep power to themselves mm -hmm. and rather than sharing it. Mm -hmm. And we're with our neighbors who have the same struggle. Mm -hmm. They Same want to be the decision maker. Same temptations. They want to give the meaning to everything. Mm -hmm. And notice how their meaning is not good, but it's a different meaning than my meaning, mm -hmm. which is totally different than theirs, but it's also not good. Mm -hmm. And But we're both coming up being the decision maker of what we're doing. And it goes about in our own lives I want to go to this restaurant, you want to go to that. I say blue, you say red. Mm -hmm. I say black, you say white. Mm -hmm. Why? Because, is it because we like to argue? Mm -hmm. No, we hate you arguing. Would think that, it, you would think we love to argue, yeah, but, but that's not the reason. But we love to have the power or mm -hmm. to not share it. Mm -hmm. If we were in a loving relationship, we would consider mm -hmm equally what the other person is presenting not as if they're an idiot and they're a fool and they're stupid all the time mm -hmm. because if we do then that's what we're going to receive mm -hmm. that's why people don't listen to us that's why people don't respect us because we're not respecting them mm -hmm. and it's, it's just like two hillbillies throwing rocks at each other <laughs> hate to pick on you hillbillies but you know what i'm saying <laughs> You, you you hurt my cousin, I'm going to hurt your neck. Well, that's what's going on in the Middle East that's right what's now. Going, it's an ancient say, version that was of my the Hatfields and McCoys. That was my second choice yeah. to use, but I didn't want to step on any sensitive yes. toes right now. Mm -hmm. But it's what we do. We're both trying to be the power. Hung, and then, trying to hold the and power And then ourselves. look at our world. <clears throat> is a total reflection oh, of yeah. this whole belief system. Yes. All the countries want all the power yes, that's right. to themselves. That's they don't right. want to share power equally right. with everybody and consider what other people are saying. Right. When they say, well, if we do that, we're going to drain our our natural resource of this too much. Why don't we come together instead of fight, come together and spend all that energy and on time nothing. and resource and money yeah. on development of what would be good for the whole. Mm -hmm. Instead of cutting each other down, thinking nobody else has anything good to offer mm -hmm. but ourselves. And our suggestions are the only good ones. Yes. Our ideas are the only good ones. Right. We're the right ones. Right. We, it's up to us to give power, right. is what we believe. But power is of God, yeah. given by God and reawakened by the Holy Spirit, who knows that as you give, you gain. Thanks for going back to that. Now that's the truth about power. The only power is the power that comes from God, or what God gives power to. And what God gives power to is the idea that as you give, you gain. Now, whoever whoever knows that as you give, as you give, you gain, that's someone who knows, who has real power, and power that came from God. And knows their God. Yeah. And knows their God. Yeah, yeah, how things really work. And knows that they're God-like, that they were created by God. Right. And so we're on... We're doing... And so where we're at is... Mm -hmm. We're right here. Um, yeah. Okay, so it says... So if you share only freedom and you share only power, because that's how God gives... Uh, God... That's how God shares power. It says then your, your freedom will be upheld through all temptation to imprison and all temptation to be imprisoned. It is them who learned of freedom that you should ask what freedom is. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
I guess so. For instance, don't ask the, set, the sparrow how the eagle soars. For those with tiny wings have not accepted for themselves the power to share with you. Which would be the ones that, exactly, that haven't learned how to, mm -hmm. to share, share power. the power. Why yeah. would you ask them the, how to get yes, power? Exactly. The little are those who don't know how to share power because they're not trying to share power. They're trying to hoard the power for themselves and uh, hoard it over others. And those who are trying to hoard power to themselves, specialness, those are the folks who have little wings. <laughs> and you're not going to ask a bird with little wings how the eagle soars. It's, off, it's, it's very close to talking about people with little wings. <laughs> little wings. Yeah. Oh, you little, oh, oh, ye of little wings. <laughs> <laughs> you tiny little wings. Trying to hoard you all have, power for yourself. You have never experienced the power to soar mm -hmm. as high up as the ego soars. How could you be the one? Mm -hmm. You, the one that hoards power, mm -hmm. doesn't share power. Like God does. In your relationships, you always want to be the boss. Mm -hmm. you, always, you always want to be right. You always want to set the course, the mm -hmm. direction. It isn't a, a unity, mm -hmm. it's a mutiny. Exactly. And, <laughs> and, exactly. and that's what the Course is saying of the little wings. That yes. person never, they think they have power. Oh yeah, they're like, mm, you, I'm you know, powerful. Everybody in their house is listening to them. Oh, they're... They're vacuuming like I tell them to when I'm taking the trash out when I tell them. See how powerful and you, you and are? They're all doing it, so I must have power. Mm -hmm. no. Yep, nope. No, you don't. That's not power, that's fear. <laughs> that's, that's, little, that's little wing stuff. That's, that's little wing talk right that's there. That's just one who flew over the cuckoo's nest and <laughs> didn't get any further than that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Little wings, all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> at, at least it sounds really cute. Yeah, it's like, it oh, you little it, wings. Yeah, you can. It yeah, sounds cuter than. Little wing yeah, birdie. instead of uh, calling them little brains. <laughs> oh, you little brains wouldn't understand that. That is offensive. <laughs> you little wings. You little wings. You've never soared to such heights. You can't even fly over the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> you smack right on into it and fall inside. <laughs> And even if you did make it over, you just land in the foyer entry. Exactly. <laughs> Where they will strap you down <laughs> and inject you with something. <laughs> I go, welcome to hell, brother. <laughs> this is for people who don't know who don't know how to share power. Yeah. This is for people. This is the place for people who want to be right all the time and be in control, as if power was theirs to give. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Okay. Don't make me laugh too much. Why? Because it's just, you know, then we won't be taken serious. Oh, okay. <laughs> can't laugh too much. Oh, yes, of course. Is that right? right? Well, you know, but the Course says, you know, this, the, the problem is that there was a joke that we forgot to laugh at. And yeah. that's how this all became so serious and tragic. So... So, good for us for laughing. Okay. Okay. Boy. All right. Here we go. I needed that. Argument. Me too. Good. The sinless give as they received. Oh, the sinless. The sinless, which is also saying the people who chose freedom. So, the sinless, the people who chose freedom, they give as they received. See, then, the power of sinlessness within each other and share with each other the power of the release from sin that you offered them. Hmm, so there's the power. So Where's the power? I was going to say it. First, we're there's just power. told the real power is in sharing. Mm -hmm. And then we're told if you want to take that up a notch and have like superpower, mm -hmm. not just power, mm -hmm. you know, in sharing, but the real power is mm -hmm. to release your brothers and sisters and sin, in other words, to really see them from innocent. sin, right? Exactly. Yeah, the sinless, right? The sinless 
if you want to be sinless, mm -hmm. we think to be sinless is to do an act of, of, an, of a religion. Uh, 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 an act of atonement. Yeah, uh, which is an act of whatever the doctrine of that religion mm -hmm. says right. to do. Mm -hmm. Then we will be sinless. Yes. And depending on the denomination of that doctrine, <clears throat> you know, we might be saved forever after we do that act. Oh, or we might need to come back every week and reenact mm -hmm. the act all so over. So maybe you know? twice a week. Yeah, but we got to keep doing yeah. it. But the sinless, if you want to be sinless, we're being told here another way of looking at things. If you want to consider getting out of the hell we've made for ourselves is to give sinlessness. It just makes sense. It's a, all the universal law of the established way that Creator made it as you give, you will receive. You mm -hmm. cannot walk off a boardwalk. Once you're on there, you have to pay the price. Whatever you give, you receive. And mm -hmm. if you give sinlessness, you receive sinlessness. Just because you think you're not sharing doesn't mean you're not sharing. We're all sharing all the time. Mm -hmm. Just we're all sharing what we don't want to share back with ourselves. We're sharing guilt, and we're thanking that that yeah, power that you. we're so powerful right, that we can break you. the universal laws of God and not get back what we mm -hmm. gave. Mm -hmm. But we are, and so it's just simply making a universal law quotation. The sinless are those who give sinlessness. Mm -hmm. the, the innocent are those who give innocence. Mm -hmm. The guilty are those who give guilt. Mm -hmm. The non-powerful are those are the ones that don't give power. Those who are in prison imprison others with guilt. Yes, you know, and this is saying that that what real power is is when you are releasing people from guilt. Yep. You know, we used to think power was up to us to give and that we have power as we take power or use power over others thinking that makes us powerful uh, it doesn't make us powerful at all the only thing that does give us power is to release others from the belief in sin to release others from guilt that is how you share power with others not lording your opinions and judgments over people but releasing them from guilt that they have believed in, that you have believed in, that's when you are sharing power and get to experience power and then don't suffer the results of anything but, but freedom. And so let's say somebody comes to you in your relationship and we're going to share now power, right? We're not mm -hmm. going to just hoard it all for mm -hmm. ourselves. And I come to you in our relationship, mm -hmm. and I say, "Hey, honey, I got this great idea. Mm -hmm. Let's max out our credit card <laughs> and take this three-day trip. Mm -hmm. I know it will be expensive, but for we those, deserve it. For those three days, right. we deserve it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so then, you know, you got to mm -hmm. share your power mm -hmm. with this. You know, could be." Not so stupid wise idea. decision. <laughs> uh -huh. We won't call it stupid. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but you know, so we got to me. We got two kind of mm -hmm. concepts going: mm -hmm. sharing power, right. and don't forget the concept of releasing them from right. guilt. So now that we're engaging in these conversations, mm -hmm. you see how we got to slow down a lot because we don't know how mm -hmm. to do that. Right, I, so, I don't. My so, temptation is, well, that's stupid, Anna. What? Right. Max out? What? Mm -hmm. See, this is why I'm running in trouble. You make these stupid ideas. <laughs> I and, thought it was and, right. And then go. <laughs> yeah, I changed it. Yeah, that's, I, that's, I, that's I all know. that. I don't want to be you the guy. You tried to take some power for yourself right there. I don't there. want to be the guy in the black case this time. <laughs> Sometimes I'll do it. Not the villain every time. So I try to change it up. But anyway, either direction, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. We have to share power, but at the same time, we have to do it mm -hmm. in a way that's not being guilty. You know, not like, well, I gotta listen to you. There, there's gotta be a win-win solution in there. And that's, in, in, in that scenario, 
if we were going to share power in that situation, then we would know that the answer is a no unless both people felt uh, were 100% yes on it. Mm -hmm. And if one person didn't want that, then instead of telling them how wrong they are and trying to change their mind and guilt tripping them to go along with your plan, you say, okay, well, I guess you don't want to do that. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, then it's a no. So there's our, you know, in that scenario where one person has a, an idea to do something and the other person doesn't want to do it. If those two people be sharing power, they would be saying, unless it's a 100% yes of both people, then it's an automatic no. And maybe it's not 100% win -win. yet because mm -hmm. the person wanting to max out the card hasn't yet allowed the other person to share their power. Mm -hmm. And when they share their power back, if done guiltless, they will say things like, well, let's, let's consider this. Because I don't feel peaceful about max, uh, mm -hmm. maxing out a card or certainly acquiring debt. So, mm -hmm. but it sounds like you, you need a three day break. Yeah. All right. So how about we do a staycation? And, and so how about we do it like Anna and I just did a steak staycation uh -huh. where we didn't go anywhere we just stayed at home turned off our phones mm -hmm. all of our wi-fi electronics mm -hmm. or you could uh, the we, tv yep. all distractions mm -hmm. and we just had a three-way party between god anna and dre where we just hung out with spirit and journaled for three days right. and that's and, that's us share, sharing and, power yeah but that was a vacation that was appealing to mm -hmm. both of us mm -hmm. You know, if it wasn't for both of us, but that's what we came down to. Mm -hmm. As we filtered it down, we realized there's a, and, and both of us, uh, she came up with the idea mm -hmm. and it just took off from there. Then we both shared mm -hmm. on it to the development that it was. I mm -hmm. added an idea to mm -hmm. it. Then after I added mm -hmm. an idea, you added an idea mm -hmm. and it was beautiful. We are both co-creating a wonderful, beautiful mm -hmm. experience, which doesn't happen, simply said, mm -hmm. if one person wants to hoard the power. Right. And God knows that a, we've totally got God out of concept. God knows that a healthy relationship is a shared relationship. Mm -hmm. God doesn't come walking in going, well, your ideas are all stupid, Greg. I mean, look at my idea through yours. You're an idiot. Mm -hmm. And always making me feel like, you know, woe is me. God wants to have a relationship with me in a way that is satisfying. Mm -hmm. Not just to God, but to me. Mm -hmm. God doesn't just want to end the night being satisfied and doesn't think about your needs or care mm -hmm. about them. God cares completely about your needs and wants you completely satisfied, which means completely able to share your power. And God set it up, it's so cool, I think, that nothing is made without God, but we have the power and ability to join God. God doesn't want to make stuff without us partaking and making stuff with. God wants a partner in making stuff with. God wants to join with us. God wants to share that power. And when we tap into it and realize it, our relationships, mine and Anna's relationship gets so much better uh, for many reasons, but the reasons that we share more, uh, we respect each other's more ideas, we realize that there, there's goodness in that idea. Don't just mm -hmm. throw the baby out with mm -hmm. it, the bathwater and go, your idea sucks. Mm -hmm. No, that idea is trying to speak something to something. the relationship. Yes, right. You know, uh, maybe it's mixed truth with, mm -hmm. with right. lies, right. you know, thinking I want to max out my charge card. Right. But the point is there is good in there. There is God in there. There is heaven in there. Mm -hmm. And if I look for it, I can find it. Oh. Need some time off? Mm -hmm. Well, you know yeah. what? I could use some time off. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's what God wants for us. Yeah. Maybe God's trying to speak it through you, but mm -hmm. we're not going to get it because I thought the whole idea was retarded mm -hmm. and I cut you down for mm -hmm. it. Now you don't feel safe to talk to me mm -hmm. and you don't share your ideas with mm -hmm. me. And now our relationship 
-hmm. sucks. Yeah, it's limited. Mm -hmm. Very limited. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Diane says that's the real definition of power couple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, a, a couple who shares power. Yeah, you're right. Instead of the the couple who's you know yeah. powerhouses in Hollywood, you know. Right. I love that. Thank you. It's beautiful. A real power couple. And in that, in, that, in that scenario where one person has an idea that the other person really doesn't want to do, another way of sharing power is where one person says, I hear that you want to go do da-da-da. I mean, and if you would like to go, I don't want to do that. It doesn't make sense to me. But mm -hmm. if you want to do that, then, then I totally support you in going and doing if that's what you feel like you want to do. Right. You know, that's another way that we could share power in that situation instead of being like, well, if I don't want to go do it, then you shouldn't do it because <laughs> I want to be in control. We did that several times today where uh, you wanted to do one thing mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. felt like yep. to do another mm -hmm. thing. Yep. And we peacefully did, did what, we what we did. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's sharing power. Yeah. That's sharing power instead of hoarding power. Uh, well, it's got to be my right. Right, exactly. Where, where it's got to, I got to be the one who's right, or it's got to be my idea, it's got to be my way, yeah. which we've all experienced. You know, in psychology, we call it uh, power struggles in our relationship, and that's that's one of the biggest uh, intimacy killers. You know, in relationships, is power struggles, where both both people in the relationship are struggling to maintain the upper hand. You know, to be right, to be in control, to be the decider. Are you saying that you don't find me sexy if I'm controlling you? That is exactly what I'm saying. Wow, okay. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> I may go along, but then I'm not going <laughs> to... <laughs> Note to self. Note to self. What makes me desirable to others? Okay. Let's see. Controlling them. Scratch that off the list. Yeah. <laughs> No, we all love when somebody gives us freedom of expression. Yes, and it's interesting, giving someone freedom is the same as sharing power is the same as releasing them from guilt. Yeah. Okay. And that's what God gives to us, and so now uh, we who want to be free, now that's all we give to others. We just give to each other what we've received from God. Now, if you just give to each other what you've already received from God, then you are your freedom will be maintained and upheld through all your temptation to imprison others or to be imprisoned yourself. You know, what what is, you know, I just want to give what God has given me. What has God given me does what I'm going to give to others. Okay. <laughs> What's that? Thank, yeah, thank God you didn't go into debt. <laughs> that, that was never even a conversation. No, no. I just brought that up yes. to be silly. That's right. It, but it was a great, it's a great example, and examples are so good. I always appreciate it when you were like, "Okay, well, what's an example?" Okay. Yeah. So um, beautiful. I <laughs> love it. Well, now, and you're great at that application. I've learned that from you. We you. all have, right, guys? Mm -hmm. Anna's been really good at applying applications and, mm -hmm. and that's really the growth in the mm -hmm. course mm -hmm. is when we take the ideas because mm -hmm. that's what the course tells us mm -hmm. it's not the belief in them yeah it's in the application yes. of them that the meaning of them will come true that's right why because when we apply them we experience the results mm -hmm. and cause and effect and when we get that result then now we can trust that application mm -hmm. and go, well, even if we don't understand it, I don't understand how I, instead of power. judging my brother, mm -hmm. I release him and just, I guess it could be a coincidence, the next day this mm -hmm. favorable thing happened in my life. Mm -hmm. And then yep. I did it again and again, this coincidentally, mm -hmm. I, this like the tide of time is turning, like yes. a rebirth is happening, like everything mm -hmm. is is changing mm -hmm. you know from the old way it was to the new way it is mm -hmm. yes beautiful okay. i love it number six paragraph six oh, okay. to each who walks this earth in seeming solitude a savior is given yes oh okay what what about that savior well, this is a savior, a person whose special function here 
is to release you and so to free himself. So a savior to each person, to each person who walks this earth in seeming solitude is a savior given. A savior whose special function here is to release you and so to free themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very interesting. So there's somebody here who special function is to release you from guilt so that they can release themselves from guilt. Right. Okay? Good to know. And in the world of separation, each one of these saviors is appointed separately, even though these saviors, they're all the same. Every single person we come up to is a savior. That's right. They're all the same. They're all the same. But they are appointed separately being that we're in a world of the illusion of separation. Right. So in other words, there's going to be a specific Savior appointed to me, a specific person appointed to you, a specific person appointed to you, a specific person appointed to everyone. Specifically to everyone. Specifically. So Spirit knows. Because Spirit knows, like, okay, this, these two people, if they, since they are such a mirror image of each other, uh, if they could release each other from guilt, they'd both be free. So I'm going to make sure these two people meet, you know, says Holy Spirit. Okay. So somewhere there is a person who's been appointed specifically for you as the one to release you from guilt because that's going to be the way that they release themselves from guilt. Now, you will not recognize this person most probably as your savior. <laughs> Don't forget that. They will not, you will not be like, oh, my Savior, you're so beautiful. Not at all. Uh, this is a person that uh, you, there will probably a feeling of guilt one way or another, somehow between you. Grievances, in other words. So basically, it'll be somebody that is a, a specifically assigned to you that uh, you have a grievance with. <laughs> and they have a grievance with you. And uh, because of that grievance, now you get to fulfill your function of saving each other by releasing each other from guilt, which is really releasing yourselves from guilt. Who knew? Good to know. But those who know that all the saviors are the same don't need saving. Okay? So... We're all being appointed separately, our own specific saviors, but the truth is, is that they're all the same savior. There's somebody who needs to be released from guilt, who needs to give release from guilt. So all the saviors are the same, right? But when you know that all saviors are the same, then you don't need saving anymore. <laughs> and each person finds their savior when each person is ready to look upon the face of innocence, the face of Christ, and see that person sinless. Every person, each one of us finds our Savior when we are ready to look on others and see others as sinless. And what do you see when you choose to look on others as sinless? You see in their face the face of Christ, the face of love. Okay. That's when you find your Savior. I'm ready to see guiltlessness in somebody. I'm ready to see I'm ready to see guiltlessness in somebody. I'm ready, I'm willing to see innocence instead of guilt in people now. I'm going to start looking for innocence in people instead of their guilt. Which is what, <clears throat> again, we've been conditioned to do, is when mm -hmm. you believe that everybody is not perfect, oh, well, nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. When you believe that all, all have to atone for what they've done wrong, nobody's right, nobody's good, that the heart of man is deceitfully wicked, meaning that we're wicked. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Which that would have to mean our creator is somehow wicked. Yeah. If that's true. Then <clears throat> we've been conditioned to look for 
guilt. Fault yes. prophet. And and guilt. You just guilt. Right, which yeah. is guilt. Which is guilt. That's yeah. what we've been trained to look mm -hmm. for because we believe we're in a world where nobody's good. Mm -hmm. So why would you look for good? Everybody was born evil. Mm -hmm. Why would you look for for innocence in a world where everybody was born evil? Yeah. Then it would only make sense you would be on your guard on your defense mm -hmm. and always looking for evil mm -hmm. and for bad because you believe you're in a world like that. Mm -hmm. But when you give up that old dog belief system mm -hmm. bone that we've been chewing on mm -hmm. and let go of it, then everybody becomes your savior because everybody believes that same thing, mm -hmm. just like you and I have. Right. It isn't until we're willing to see the the face of innocence in another mm -hmm. that they become our savior because without them we can't be saved. Exactly. It requires yes. two of us to That's enter right. the ark. That's so right. I need mm -hmm. somebody to punch my mm -hmm. ticket to stay on the train, to get mm -hmm. on the bus. We need somebody who will will who Bounce will for me. let us release them from guilt and who will release us from guilt yeah it isn't gonna be what have you done so that you should enter into the mm -hmm. kingdom and, and we give them a magic prayer potion mm -hmm. we said <laughs> it's gonna be well what have i done look at i have i, mm -hmm. I, I brought somebody with me i didn't just bring the one mm -hmm. little piece of value that mm -hmm. you made me right. i brought back with me and mm -hmm. doubled your mm -hmm. Your Investment. planting, mm -hmm. and now there's a produce greater than mm -hmm. what you planted. Lord, there's mm -hmm. I'm innocent, and mm -hmm. look at my neighbor. Mm -hmm. I gave to them what I would have mm -hmm. me receive. Mm -hmm. You see, Which Lord, I've been following thy mm -hmm. statutes, mm -hmm. thy commands, mm -hmm. and thy establishment. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord's going to go, All right, come on in. They, they punched your ticket for you. Well, no need for me to punch it. Come on in and have a seat next to the other donkeys. <laughs> donkeys? Well, that's just the other animal. That's just an expression. Okay, You're just I got a you. chicken. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. Moving along. <laughs> okay. A little Noah's Ark illusion there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, it's, we're talking about uh, to each person who walks this earth in seeming solitude is a Savior given. And this Savior who's given you, specifically, their special function here is to release you so that they can free themselves from guilt. And in the world of separation, each person is appointed their Saviors separately, though all Saviors are the same. But those who know that all saviors are the same do not need saving. And you find, each person finds their savior when they are ready to look upon the face of innocence and see other people, even just one other people, as sinless. One other person. The plan for the healing of mankind is not of you. The plan of saving you and saving them is not of you. The plan of your being saved from what you made is not of you. So the plan for how you're going to get your freedom by giving the freedom uh, from guilt, that plan is not your plan, obviously. <laughs> That's right. the exact opposite of your plan We've for happiness. That. That's for sure. Our plan for salvation was, I'm going to get that person who has something I don't have, and then I'm going to control them and use power over them through guilt so they will give me that specialness that they have that I don't have, and we're going to call it love. And that is our plan for salvation. <laughs> and how's that working out for us? How's that been working out for us? All right. I don't think we need to look far. I don't think we even need to, to, uh, to express that. So the plan for saving you is not of you, nor need you be concerned with anything of that plan except the part that has been given you to learn. To see innocence in another. That's right. One person. <clears throat> Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? One person. And remember, all the saviors are the same. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You, you can't see one as a savior and another as right. an anti -God. Exactly. And that's exactly right, that everyone, this, what he's saying is that all saviors are the same, which is saying that everyone is our savior. 
everyone's being given us so that we can see innocence and guiltlessness in them so that we can experience it in ourselves. That's, that's everybody. Everybody that we encounter is somebody that was specifically assigned to us for us to see their innocence, their guiltlessness, so that we can see it in ourselves. Okay. <laughs> Exactly, Diana. Exactly. exactly. That is truth. Our plan sucks. That's truth in a bottle. It That's sure what... does. <laughs> it sucks gasoline, let me tell you. <laughs> it's a real gas guzzler. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so the plan for how you are going to be free is not of you, nor need you be concerned with anything except the part of the plan that's been given you to learn. In the plan for your freedom because the one who knows the rest of that plan will see to it without your help that that plan for your freedom and theirs is accomplished all you gotta worry about is your part in that plan which is choosing to give release from guilt choosing to see the face of innocence in them instead of uh, instead of your enemy okay? choosing freedom that's all you got to do is your part in accomplishing the plan of your freedom. That plan uh, for your freedom didn't come from you. Remember, your plan was not to have freedom. Your plan was to imprison others with guilt in the name of love and to be imprisoned by others in the name of love. That was your plan. That was our plan. And whatever you share, you share with yourself. That's exactly right. But don't think that Spirit, Holy Spirit, don't think the Holy Spirit does not need your part to help Holy Spirit with the rest of the plan for yeah. your freedom. Even though it wasn't our plan. Even though it wasn't your plan, uh, Spirit needs your part really bad. Right. And why is it the Spirit needs my part in the plan of freedom, mine and theirs? Because in our part lies the all of the plan without which is no part complete nor is the whole completed without our part so the whole plan is that the whole what they mm -hmm. call sonship mm -hmm. family of god sort of like a, a, the starship that's going to take us all away together <laughs> the sonship was which is the kingdom which family is of God. the whole kingdom of God, the whole children of God, all the of whole creation. family. All of creation. Little Johnny, just because he made a mess of himself in the bathroom, doesn't get <laughs> left behind. The whole family of God mm -hmm. go together. Or not at all. Or not at all. And mm -hmm. so if any part of the whole is missing, mm -hmm. then the whole is not whole. It's incomplete. It's incomplete. That's right. And that's why it's so... That's why your part is so crucial. Now, you didn't make the plan, but you sure as heck do have a part in that plan. And your part in God's plan for the healing of mankind is crucial. Because without your part, the plan for the healing of mankind is incomplete. So, your part is important. Uh, in your part lies all, all parts. In your part lies the whole plan. The, the whole is not completed without your part. That's how important it is. And so that's why the ark of peace is entered two by two. Yet the beginning of another world goes with those two. And I guess that clarifies it more for me because mm -hmm. <clears throat> once you've entered the ark, mm -hmm. you're not going to be on the ark and then hopefully and then get amnesia and forget how you got on the heart. <laughs> wouldn't make any sense that you finally, after all these millenniums, or how many, many decades some of us have lived, mm -hmm. <clears throat> after all this time, you finally found out how to get onto the boat of peace, mm -hmm. the ark of peace, mm -hmm. where, where you're soaring like an eagle above mm -hmm. the battlefield. The holy relationship. Right. Once you've experienced true power, Mm -hmm. I mean, that power... True, shared power. You're not going to go back yeah. to flying with the wings of a little tiny sparrow. Exactly. You're going to continue now mm -hmm. because now you've experienced it. Mm -hmm. Once you've experienced power, you don't go back to the powerless. That mm -hmm. would make no sense. Exactly. You know, 
now that I've found out what works, I'm going to go back to what, doesn't what work. I did for a long time mm -hmm. that never accomplished what Never I worked. You won't do that. Right. Once you enter it in, it starts as a... That's why I should have clarified it for mm -hmm. me a little bit mm -hmm. there personally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I was thinking, you know, you get on and get, mm -hmm. get kicked oh, off. Oh, okay, right. Mm -hmm. On and off, on and off. But the beginning of the new world begins mm -hmm. with you entering two by two. Mm -hmm. Now that you've entered in, you've entered into a new world. We're using an art. Uh, the author here is using the ark, Noah's ark, as a symbolic mm -hmm. word picture yes. of what's going on. Mm -hmm. But what is really going on, in essence, is you're entering a new world. Mm -hmm. As they say, we're, we're entering a new millennium. Mm -hmm. the, the, the times are changing. It's not going to be any more like the old ways. Because more and more people are waking up to these truths. And more and more people are being witnesses to the effects of these truths applications. And more and more people are going to be where they cannot but help notice the differences in the lives and the experiences. They can't call them coincidences anymore. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to stand up and take note of the contrast of those that walk mm -hmm. this path those who walk and afraid. those that have been on the path mm -hmm. wandering around in a circle in the desert forever mm -hmm. yep. in dry misery. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a starting, and, and Anna and I were discussing this. This isn't a best say at the Lord thing. This is a talking out loud thing that we like to say. <clears throat> but we believe that, uh, that the effects are, qu are happening quicker. Mm -hmm. In other words, when you judge somebody, the it happens within a... Uh, the effects of that the effects come of it back to you even faster. Within a time period. But now mm -hmm. it's happening faster and faster. For us. The effect, at least for us. Because we're putting it together. Yeah. You know, because we're... And we're realizing, oh, I did that and that mm -hmm. happened. Right, oh, exactly. I did that and that happened. Oh, right. I did this and that happened. Exactly. And so when we get onto the ark, we're going to be like, woohoo! Mm -hmm. Oh, wow! I finally yeah. found peace. Mm -hmm. Gotta have peace. I finally figured out something that really works. Why would I want to go back to what didn't give me peace? Yes. Well, it just starts with one. It mm -hmm. just starts with one. And that's not so hard. We look at the world and we're like, well, how can I forgive all these people? They are not worth forgiving. Mm -hmm. And yet, the Creator says something different. And as the Course says, who's right and who's wrong? Mm -hmm. The world is worth loving, and we say the world is unlovable. Mm -hmm. Who's right and who's wrong? Mm -hmm. One of us has to be right. Mm -hmm. One of us has to be wrong because we're saying two opposites. Mm -hmm. And so when we share power, rather than the old way of taking power mm -hmm. and controlling, mm -hmm. <coughs> you know? Yeah, beautiful. What does Robert Perry have to he say says, about that? He says, um, in the course, each pair of holy relationship partners needs to enter the Ark of Peace, which seems to be the holy instant, a place of safety in which that pair will learn its function in establishing the new world. Establishing the new world. And each pair, because remember it says, in this world of seeming, uh, where everyone walks in seeming solitude, a savior is given, mm -hmm. and that savior that's given you, that's the that's your holy relationship partner. Who, wh whether that person is a child, a mate, a friend, a colleague, or whatever, but that that's the person that has has been given and assigned to you to be your holy relationship partner where uh, where in the, you enter the ark together, you to learn your relationship's function in establishing the new world. The new world is established by two people, two saviors who are assigned to each other to save each other from the belief in guilt. <laughs> and these two people, as they learn their holy relationship purpose, which is to save each other from guilt, okay, and themselves as well, then 
these two partners are the beginning of, of the new world. So that's how important, that's the function of each uh, uh, savior partnership. That's the function of you have a, you two people whose job, whose function is to release each other from guilt. You know, your, that's your relationship's function. And when you accomplish the, that function, then you, you two folks, uh, you are the bringers of the new world. Oh, that's pretty important. Who knew that your relationships had such a holy function? Who knew? This whole, this whole art story is really a very deep, deep spiritual story <clears throat> wherein, uh, as with the things that God tries to convey to, to us, is done through symbols. We use words which are symbols, and God uses symbols to communicate to us. And the whole story of the ark is uh, a room, a boat, mm -hmm. a home, as it's describing here, a new world of safety, a new world of being born. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because only those that were on the ark are going to enter into the new world. Mm -hmm. And with the water, what Spirit has shown me, what the water represents, the flood, mm -hmm. represents the sea. And what is the sea but that place that we were told, I don't know if it was David who wrote in, uh, that the Lord had cast all of the iniquities of mankind, all of the sins, into the sea to be remembered no more. The waters represent the ocean, the sea, which is a place where our sins are remembered no more. And remembered by who no more? By us no more. And it wasn't that mankind was being killed off back then in this story. The symbolic message was that old tradition belief system of we were born as sinners, that we are born of a corruptible seed that, uh, you know, we might as well party and, and live it up for today for what? Tomorrow we die. Because why? We're all sinners. That old belief system needs to be drowned, needs to be cast into the depths of the sea to be remembered no more. And out of some of prophecies have talked about dragons. I've been talking to a little for some reason, this topic of dragons have been coming up a lot. That the beast, the the satanic antichrist, whatever you want to call it, uh, will come where? From out of the sea. From where our sins were cast by God to be remembered no more. And yet the dragon's going to come up out of the sea with its, uh, we don't have time to get into it, it's, you know, heads and horns and blasphemous words and all this stuff. But it's coming up to accuse the children of God again for sin. And the boat is just floating over the top of all of that. Just up above it. Just like the eagle. Mm -hmm. it's soaring not, above the battleground. Soaring above the battleground. And it's all symbolic of this, that old... Uh, curriculum that we've been conditioned to believe to be drowned out and uh, that's why it will be again as in the days of Noah in the last days because just that old belief system has to get drowned out again it has to be taken out it has to be cast into the depths of the sea to be remembered no more and some people have heard of a new heaven and a new earth wherein there will be no sea in the new earth. And now it would make sense because there would be no place where God had cast the sins of man to be remembered no more because there's not even a place anymore where that is. But anyway, it's a, all a lot of symbolism and that's what the ark is. It's, it's, a, it's a symbolic gesture of what's going on in words that we can try to put in our imagination to understand 
And if we can just get the point that if we give innocence, we get mm -hmm. we get on the boat. And that and that's the 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 holy relationship, the relationship who has the purpose of saving each other and yourselves from the belief in guilt. That your relationship becomes like an ark, an ark of peace. Your relationship becomes a saving vessel. It becomes a portal through which people can go from one world to a new world. And that's what the ark is. It's a vessel of peace that transports you from one world to another. And the relationship is, is the portal or is the, the, the ark. And I love it. Diana says that stuff that used to take her three weeks mm -hmm. to get over. Mm -hmm. Now it's take, you know, got condensed down to three hours then sometimes three minutes, mm -hmm. three days, mm -hmm. you know, instead of three weeks, faster, faster, mm -hmm. faster. Things are uh, seemingly, at least again for us, and I'm glad mm -hmm. you shared confirmation on that, is happening faster. Mm -hmm. Yep. Love it. Amen to that. All right. So it says, uh, and right, and as the purpose of your your relationship with your Savior is fulfilled, a new world in a new world rises in which sin cannot enter, and where we, the children of God, can enter without fear. That's the description of the new world that is uh, that goes with those two people as they enter the ark of peace. Okay? Um, the new world is what? It's a place, it's a new world, it's a world in which sin can't enter and where the children of God can enter this world without fear. And it's a world where we rest a while to forget imprisonment and to remember freedom. That's the new world that goes with the two people who agree to save each other and themselves by releasing each other from guilt. Now, how can we enter the Ark of Peace to rest and to remember without them? How can they enter the Ark of Peace without us? And how can we enter without them? Except that they be there in the Ark of Peace then, I mean, except that you be there in the Ark of Peace, they are not complete. And it is their completion that they remember there in the Ark of Peace, which is entered two by two. Think not that your forgiveness of each other serves only you two alone. Because the whole new world rests in the hands of every two who enter here to the Ark of Peace to rest. And as these two people rest after they've joined, released each other from guilt and entered the Ark of Peace, the new world, as these two people rest, the face of love shines on them and these two people remember the laws of God and these two people forget all the rest and these two people yearn only to have God's laws perfectly fulfilled in them and everyone else. Now think you that when the, the laws of God in the real world are perfectly fulfilled in you and everyone, think you that when that is achieved that you will rest without them? You could no more leave one of them outside the Ark of Peace than I could leave you and forget part of myself. I love that. All-inclusive. Talk about an all-inclusive trip. This all-inclusive includes all of us, mm -hmm. including you, mm -hmm. including me. Mm -hmm. When we don't, <clears throat> I was just writing in this chat room before class a little bit ago. <clears throat> when we open the door to hell and say that, okay, this one person here, they're an idiot. For whatever reason, I judge them to be an idiot. Or, or they're not worthy for whatever reason, I judge them not to be worthy to enter in the ark, then of course I exclude myself. <clears throat> and when I exclude myself, I exclude everybody because I can only do that under a belief system. But when I exclude one, I open up the opportunity that that one could be me. Mm -hmm. I could be that one. If I never open that door, 
that anybody could be excluded, then I keep myself safe and my brother safe. I become my brother's keeper mm -hmm. with my brother. I keep everybody safe. Mm -hmm. I'm not willing that one be left behind. Yes. And we've been conditioned again that there will be a bunch left behind. Anybody that doesn't believe the way we believe will be mm -hmm. left behind. Mm -hmm. And we're not many. So most people will be left behind the total opposite way that God does it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So uh, I'm just going to, there's only two more paragraphs, I'm so I'm going to speed listen. read. Okay. You may want, so we're, what we just talked about right here was God's plan for your freedom, right? Mm -hmm. And God's plan for your freedom is that you give somebody else freedom, which means release from guilt, then you get it. You get to, you, you can, you can enter the ark of peace and into a world of safety and peace. If you just take somebody else with you by releasing them from guilt, that's God's plan for your freedom. Okay. And it says in paragraph nine, you may wonder how you can be at peace when while you are in time, there is so much that must be done before the way to peace is opened. Well, perhaps having peace here seems impossible to you, but you need to ask yourself if it is possible that God would have a plan for your freedom that does not work. Yeah, is that we just, possible? We just heard about God's plan for your freedom. <laughs> and is it possible that God would have a plan for your freedom that doesn't work? <clears throat> you need to ask yourself that question. Is it possible that God would have a plan for my freedom that doesn't work? You need to ask yourself that question. Because, because once you accept God's plan for freedom as the one function that you would fulfill, there will be nothing else that the Holy Spirit will not arrange for you without your effort. Mm. In God's plan, once you accept the God's plan is one function that you would fulfill. God himself will go before you. I mean, the Holy Spirit will go before you. Holy Spirit will make straight your path. Holy Spirit will leave in your way no stones to trip on and no obstacles to bar your way. And with God's plan, nothing you need will be denied you. Not one seeming difficulty, but will melt away before you reach it. You need take thought for nothing careless of everything except the only purpose that you would fulfill and as that purpose was given you so will its fulfillment also be given you God's guarantee that you will fulfill your purpose and your part in God's plan God's guarantee will hold against all obstacles for God's guarantee rests on certainty and not on contingency God's guarantee rests on you. And what can be more certain than a child of God? Wow. So, you know, once you, once you have done, once you accept God's plan as the one function that you would fulfill, there will be nothing else the Holy Spirit will not arrange for you without your effort. Holy Spirit will go before you, making straight your path and leaving in your way. No stones to trip on and no obstacles to bar your way. Nothing you need will be denied you. Not one seeming difficulty, but will melt away before you reach it. Okay. When what? Once you accept God's plan for freedom as the only function that you would fulfill. So we can see in our life when we're tripping over stones and obstacles, mm -hmm. things seem to be barring our mm -hmm. way, things are denied to us, yes. then we can see mm -hmm. uh, the fruits of what happens when you deny others their salvation. Yeah. When you're trying to follow a different plan for right. freedom than God's plan for your freedom. When you're not sharing power, mm -hmm. you're the one taking all the power exactly through through guilt and control exactly but once you accept god's plan for freedom as the one function the one function that you would fulfill everything else is given you your path is made clear everything you need is given you obstacles melt away before you reach it you don't need to be care. You don't need to be concerned or anxious about anything except the only purpose that you would fulfill. I'm not saying that's how it goes. I'm not saying Anna and I are by any means perfect, but I am saying we're starting to get it right 
and the evidence is what it says in mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. We had a lease on a property uh, and we didn't know what to do, to be honest with you. <clears throat> we were sitting there going, well, this lease comes due in less than three months and we don't know where we're gonna move. We're renting right now. We don't know, uh, should we be looking for rentals pretty soon or a new place to go? Or We weren't even looking at all in the real estate market. That seemed like the last place to look where, with interest rates and where the market's going. That that was a wise idea. And before uh, our obstacle even came about, mm -hmm. the the solution was already given to us. Before we reached the obstacle. Yeah. Uh, and, and it, it wasn't through the door we thought it would even be through, but it was uh, a doorway mm -hmm. that uh, gave us so much mm -hmm. in what uh, we wanted and needed and desired and what Holy mm -hmm. Spirit wants and desires to continue the ministry that we're in. Mm -hmm. Nothing, not one seeming difficulty, but will melt away before you reach it. Mm -hmm. Pretty before good. Before you reach it. Spirit, spirit will go before you, making straight your path and leaving in your way no stones to trip on and no obstacles to bar your way. Nothing you need will be denied you when once you accept God's plan for your freedom as the only function that you would fulfill. In, the property, in your relationships. In the property that we had coming up had higher, multiple higher offers, mm -hmm. higher than ours. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it had obstacles like mm -hmm. our money wasn't in physical cash. We mm -hmm. had to sell some a bunch of investments mm -hmm. to get it out. The sellers, mm -hmm. you know, were wondering how we could pull that off in time considering mm -hmm. the investment it was in. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but all the obstacles were, were melted away before melted we away. before we reached them. Yeah. Because one after another. Because Greg and I have accepted God's plan for freedom in our relationship. Greg and I have accepted God's plan for us in the sharing of power in our relationship, like God shares power. And because of that, that is how our, it has been in our relationship for the years we've been together. Is that it seems like as soon as you know, with an obstacles coming up, it's like melted before we, you know, before we reach it. And it's not because we're lucky. It's because that's what happens when you accept God's plan for your freedom. God's plan for you to experience love. Uh, and, and you decide that's the only plan I want to fulfill is God's plan here in this relationship. The only thing that I would have accomplished in this relationship is God's will, God's plan for peace, God's plan for freedom, God's plan for joy, God's plan for love, God's plan for my happiness. And when that's the decision of two people in a relationship, literally the red carpet rolls out before them and all the obstacles are removed before they even reach them. So, and I know that that's true. I mean, and then, I, and then when there is a bunch of obstacles, then I know I'm trying to do my own plan. I'm trying to make, I'm trying to take power for myself and make up the plan for what would make me happy in the relationship. And then next thing I know, obstacle, 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 obstacle. Right. So, no. When we don't see the innocence in the other, and that's mm -hmm. what we're told was the greatest power mm -hmm. is when we share innocence with another mm -hmm. yep there's no greater power than that shared power mm -hmm. than to share yes. our innocence yes. with another yes. and the way that i've been personally being able to practice this myself that i would share with you is that <clears throat> anna and i go back to the basics that we were made in the image of god mm -hmm. that we were made in god's likeness and that we were made in God's likeness and God is a changeless God. God. God changes not. And when you start looking at people as God-like, not God, but mm -hmm. God-like, yes. in the likeness of God, mm -hmm. which is what? Which well, is innocent. One, one likeness of God is innocent. Innocent, guiltless, guiltless. sinless. 
you can't see mm -hmm. made in the image of mm -hmm. God. Let mm -hmm. us make in the image of mm -hmm. if you're making a different image. Mm -hmm. And if it's in the image of God, if God has to share that image with us, then that image has to be innocent or mm -hmm. it can't be a shared making of that image. Mm -hmm. If it's an image that has guilt, then God is, we're not sharing the power with God mm -hmm. to make that image. Mm -hmm. We're doing it all on our own. I want to make a thing of, of disgust. I want to make a thing of guilt. I want to make them up to be how I think they should be. Yeah. How I think they are. I don't want to join God in what God mm -hmm. wants to share. I want to see them the way I want to see them. Right. I want to then, take power to myself. So what results do we want to get? Mm -hmm. Do we want to get the results where we're out sounding like this? He's <laughs> drowning in our own condemnation? Mm -hmm. Or do we want to be on the boat up on the sun deck singing on a karaoke deck? That's what I want <laughs> With to With a margarita at sunset. Now, now I'm not going to be the one singing, but I am going to be the I one with the margarita. Well, you might be. Or you might, you might be one singing. From everything I had to go through to see <laughs> my innocence in you. Yes, exactly. I need a drink. <laughs> need a drink. What it took to, for me to see the innocence in you, I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> On our relationship. Yes, yeah. Okay. All right, you guys. Well, we finished the section in two parts. Beautiful. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Really, truly, thanks for joining us and sharing your thoughts and, and joining in this co-creation of this idea where we're learning that all we want to do is accept our part, accept God's plan as the one function that we would fulfill. All right, guys. Love you guys. You know we love you. It's not just because we say it. It's because we believe it.